We're building a Pokedex, but right now we're just loading in the hard-coded first 151 Pokemon. In this video, we're going to show how to load in the Pokemon dynamically from the different generations. So when you click on one of these, it'll load in the Pokemon for that generation. Let's start by going to where our generations are listed out. Here it is in the code, and here it is in our app. And we're going to want to make these clickable. And so first we're going to do an on click, and then we're going to want to update the query params. And we already have update search params from before, so we'll go ahead and use that. Update search params, and then we'll put in the generation ID, and then the ID. And we'll need to do a couple things. So first, we need to get this on different lines so that we can see it all at once. And then we'll see that this is a type number and it expects a string. And so we can do that. And then it has this accessibility issue. So if we need an on-click event for any visible non-interactive -inter element, then we need an on-key down, on-key uh, up, something like that. So we could add that but that's a bit of a pain. Or we could change this to a button. So now that is a naturally clickable element. So let's try this out. We click Alola and we have generation ID equals seven. Click Kanto and back to generation ID equals one. Now let's go ahead and make it so that the user is able to see the results of what they've clicked even if they don't look into the URL. First, we'll create our active class and apply it to everything, just so we can see that it's working. So now we go to our generation and if.generation and active. And that looks pretty good. So then we'll scroll back up here and we'll make it so active only applies if the generation ID here is the same thing as the generation ID from the search params. So let's go up to where we're pulling data from the search params, and then we'll get the selected generation ID. And that'll come from page.url.searchparams, and then we'll get the generation ID, or an empty string. Then we'll go down and use this to see if we should show the active class. And there are a couple ways of doing this. I'll show the naive way first. So it's just basically a ternary. And yeah, that does work. However, there is a more svelte-like way to do this. And so how you do that is you do class colon active, and then you put a Boolean there. And that is much more clear in my opinion. So this is looking good. Let's just do a couple more things with the style before we move on to loading the monsters. So first we'll want to add a cursor pointer to all of the generations because they are now clickable. Good. And now we'll make it so that when you hover over an active one, it doesn't look weird. We'll do this by adding a hover state to when it has generation and active classes. And we'll make the background color 444. And so, yeah, that's a nice, very subtle effect. Now we want to actually load the different monsters. These are not the monsters that are in Kalos. These are the Kanto monsters. So to do that, we'll go to our page.ts, which is in the same route as this, and then We'll go ahead and change this response. The first thing we we'll want to do is get the generation ID from the query params. So we'll get our URL, so url.searchparams, and then get the generation ID and assign that to the generation ID variable. And we'll go ahead and yeah, add in a default of one. And we can go ahead and make that a const since this will not be changing. Now we'll want to get a generation response. And we will go ahead and go to the Poke API 
and get it from v2 slash generation and then the generation ID. And we can get the generation JSON by running dot JSON on it. And so this should give us something interesting. Let's go ahead and run console.log on this generation JSON and see what we get. So when we inspect our source, we can see that we have a big object with a bunch of abilities. We have the main region. And here's what's really interesting. We have the Pokemon species. And so now we can get const, we'll call it generation monsters in order to avoid a namespace collision. And yeah, we'll just get the Pokemon species. And here what we can do is we could just feed it back here. And there will be a couple issues here in that we are not giving them the image or the ID. So that's a bit of an issue. So let's go ahead and copy this. So we will go ahead and do dot map and do all of this at the end of here. And this gives us everything we need. And we click these and we reload. Perfect. And of course, we can comment out or delete all of the other code that we were using previously, and it will still work. Now, usually at this point, I just delete this old code, but there is another feature that I think would be interesting to make. And so we'll need to look at this for just a little bit longer. And that feature is having an all button. So it shows all of the Pokemon, not just the ones from a specific region. It makes sense for all to be up here alongside the generations. And so it makes sense to store it in the generation ID, even though it's not technically an ID. And then that makes our naive version here very easy. So if generation ID is equal to all, then we use our old code. So we just grab all of this and put it in here and uncomment it. And if it's not all, then we do the code that we just wrote. And so we, uh, all right, so there is a little bit of an issue here. So we'll just do uh, let monsters equals null. And then we will assign stuff to monsters here. And we'll go ahead and make sure that these are always index monsters that we know that. Cool. So we'll assign these to monsters and we will assign these to monsters and then we'll just return monsters. And of course we will have to remove this const so it's assigning it to this thing here. All right, cool. So this is working still and let's put all in here. And now it is, well, it's doing the first 151. Let's go ahead and expand this. So it does the first, however many there are and Yep, it is now loading all of them. So there are two big improvements we can make to this. The first is actually having an all button up here. The second is to take the parts of this that are the same and consolidate them. So do a little bit more abstraction here so we have less repetition. We'll start with the visual part here and we will go to our generations and we'll just put a button here. And so this button will have class of generation, and then it will have a class active if the selected generation ID is equal to all. And then we'll just say all here. And when we save this, good, it's showing up. Then we need to have it have an on click and so we'll copy this over here, but replace this part with just the string all. Cool, and now we will go ahead and click between them. And this is working, fantastic. The next improvement is to go in here and find the things that are the same. And so what we'll see is that things that are different are this part, so the URL that we send up, and then the key that we use on that URL. But then after that, everything is the same. There are lots of clever ways to do this. Let's go ahead and go with one of the less clever ones so it's more clear. 
So instead of letting monsters, let's go ahead and let a monster list, which then will turn into the monsters. And so this will be just an empty array. And so the monster list here will be just json.results. And then here it will just be generation JSON and Pokemon species. So we'll do monster list here. And then what we can do is we can take the monster list and create monsters here. And we'll of course map through the monsters and there we go. That should get us that. It looks like there is an error and it's because that we already have monsters here. So let's go ahead and remove that and add our types back in. And this should get us what we need. Excellent. And so this is much less code because we're reusing the stuff that is the same. So as a precaution, let's go ahead and test some of our previous functionality. So let's go ahead and search for Pokemon in the Johto region. Oh, it looks like we switched back to here. And the reason for that is we are not preventing the default behavior on this form submit. And so what we can do is just do a prevent default here. And now when we do this search, it searches correctly. This is a great reminder to always follow best practices, even if leaving them off doesn't currently cause a bug, because this was fine when it was just one region we were loading, but now that we added more regions, this old code caused a bug. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode when we go beyond this one single route and start to add more routes using our file system based router.